It finally happened. Washington's made their way into the top four. You are Locked On Huskies, your daily podcast on the Washington Huskies. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back into another episode of the Lockdown Husky Podcast. Another bonus episode here on this this Tuesday evening. I hope everybody's having a very happy Thanksgiving week. I'm Roman Tomashoff with Inside the Huskies and Sports Illustrated and Fan Nation. You check out all my written work over at si.com slash college slash Washington. And it's it's just me today, as as all of uh, all of the live viewers can see. So we're finally going to be talking about Washington making their way into the top four as they vault Florida State into that number four spot. And I mean Whew. Is that a big sigh of relief? Did it did it take a long time to do it? Yes, but they finally got there. So it's 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 nice to see that. And I think one of the biggest things that we can talk about with all this is the fact that the, the argument is there now. And it did it take a little bit longer than we expected? Yes, Damien Kay, welcome. Great to have you here. Uh, I appreciate you you being here right when it starts. It means a lot to me. I like that. Uh but I, I do think that. One of the biggest things that we need to talk about is the fact that on the the ESPN breakdown, where I mean, it's it's really the, the biggest thing that we have to go off of with most of this, right? Is the fact that the argument is being made that four might even be too low for Washington because of their body of work. Ohio State's got a couple big wins with Ohio. Um, Ohio State's got a couple big wins with the, the Notre Dame win, and then with the um, the Penn State win as well. And then Michigan's got the Penn State win, and that's just about it. And we can finally just discuss Washington's body of work instead of just saying, Hey, well, they need to get into the top four versus, okay, well now can there be a little bit more movement inside the top four? Because I think there, there definitely can be. And it was really nice to see people like Greg McElroy making an argument for Washington to be as high as number two in the rankings. And I think that it's one of those things that Lars and I talk about on this, this every single day, right? Where if Washington just keeps winning, everything's going to work out. Everything's going to end up being just fine as long as the Huskies are able to beat Wazoo this weekend. And then whoever they end up facing next weekend, whether it be Oregon or whether that be Arizona, they just have to keep winning. And they're getting healthier at the right time. You guys will hear more about it on uh, tomorrow's episode on the Wednesday show and throughout the course of the week that one of the biggest things that, I mean, that neither Oregon or Arizona, no matter who they play, has had to face yet this season is Washington didn't have Julius Bulo in either of those games, and they didn't have Jalen McMillan in either of those games. So having both of those guys on the field is going to be huge. And I mean, Boo Corrigan loves to talk about. It. I and I for for anyone who follows me on on Twitter, I you know I I love to take a, a jab where I can here and there because some of the the explanations we've seen this season have not necessarily been great. Hey, hey, Jackson Shore, welcome to the party. Did Boo say anything stupid? I turned it off and screamed, finally. I, I also just kind of let out a big sigh of relief and said, finally, this is this is coming true. No, no, he, shockingly enough, did not say anything super detrimental this week. So, you know, credit to him there where, where credit is due. But I mean, it, you know, all, all of this is really a step in the right direction when when, when you really think about it. But I mean, hey, it's it's nice that we can finally start having these discussions instead of just saying, oh, we'll win and everything will take care of itself. Because obviously that's still number one here. As as we kind of look at everything else that's going on here with Michigan and Ohio State playing this weekend, Washington might even have a chance to move up another spot, which is great. And then playing whoever it be between Oregon and, Ari and Arizona would give them a chance to move up another spot. And we are going to keep going on this. But Real quickly, got to give a shout out to our good friends over at Prize Picks because Prize Picks is the most fun you can have, winning up to 25 times your money this football season. And now you can play during basketball season too. All you have to do is select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. And with the basketball se season being here now, you can now pick combo projections across football and basketball from the Specials League, a league which is created specifically for combo projections that include two or more players from different sports or leagues. For example, LeBron James plus Travis Kelsey at a 10.5 combo of three pointers made plus receptions. And one of the coolest things about prize picks is their reboot policy so that your entries stay in place 
even if one of your players gets injured for football and basketball games. If you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. PrizePix is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. If you want to get in on the action, go to prizepix.com slash college and use code LOCKDOWNCOLLEGE for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, go to prizepix.com slash college and use code LOCKDOWNCOLLEGE for a first deposit match up to $100. PrizePix is daily fantasy sports made easy. Keep it going here. I appreciate you guys in the comments. Just <laughs> as, as always, Jackson, appreciate you. The best part of the live stream uh, is Roman with ad reads. Hey, you know, I, I do my best to get them right. It's it's tough, but I enjoy it. Will Griggs says the host on ESPN initially said Washington moves up because Travis got hurt. And I cringed so hard. Uh, Reese Davis, who is uh, uh, does a really great job with the show. Uh, did kind of walk that back a little bit and said that, no, it is kind of due to Washington's body of work. And I know that we've talked about on the show long enough that uh, Washington has had the body of work for a while now. And it's kind of crazy that it took three ranked wins in a row to kind of get to this point. And that's something that I know I've harped on in previous weeks on the show. And it's something that I'm going to continue to harp on because it's it's crazy. And yeah, we've seen both USC and Utah fall out of the rankings in the last two weeks with with extra losses. But I mean, what more can you do than beat the team who's in front of you? And the fact that they were ranked when Washington played them should still mean a lot. And I mean, I, I know that people are going to run down Oregon for the same thing now that Utah has fallen out of the top 25, that uh, Oregon technically has no ranked wins on the schedule. And yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to take a jab there where I can too. But I think that we still do end up uh, just, we can still end up discussing that. I think the, the biggest thing that will come into play for Washington down the stretch here is going to be the strength of record. And they have, they have a chance to make a little bit of history. I know it's something uh, that's been discussed on Twitter throughout the week uh, is that nobody has ever run the table and gone 12 and 0 in the Pac-12 era, and that would be really, really cool to see in uh, in the final year of the Pac-12 RIP. But I think that it would be really, really fun to kind of see Washington do that in the final year of the schedule, and then hopefully, you know, whoever they end up playing in the Pac-12 championship game are able to continue this this really just truly incredible run that they've been on. And as I alluded to a little bit earlier in the show, I don't necessarily want to go too deep into it because uh, we're going to talk about it on the Wednesday show. So make sure you, you again you, that you tune in for that is. Julius Bulow and Jalen McMillan did not play in against either team that Washington would face in the Pac-12 championship. And I think that that's really something to keep an eye on here because uh, it's something that Boo Corrigan has mentioned multiple times. And I, I kind of just have to sigh when I say this, but he said that injuries are going to be taken into account for a certain factor, but it, you know, when you, you can consider injuries like that, especially to Jalen McMillan, who was a thousand yard receiver last year, that Washington didn't necessarily have that same, like, benefit of the doubt when it came to injuries with kind of where they were ranked for the majority of this. But again, we can't harp on that. And all we can harp on is the present and that Washington is now inside the top four, which, Hey, that's great. Michigan, Ohio state going to take care of each other. That's going to be great. Washington's spot in the Pac-12 championship is kind of, well, not kind of, it is confirmed at this point. Also, if you guys have any questions in the, in, in the comment section, please feel free to fire them away. And whenever I do these live shows, I, I really do appreciate any, any comments that, and questions that can be thrown my way that I can just keep rattling off for you because it's, it's, uh, it's rare that we can kind of get these, these one-on-one -on -one interactions with, with the majority of you. So I, I really would appreciate any questions that you might have. So again, please feel free to fire away. And I think that one of the biggest takeaways for me personally is that the biggest theme through all of this has been that just win and everything will take care of itself. Uh, Jackson says, what's the status on Asa Turner? Ah, uh, doesn't, doesn't look too great. I don't think we're going to see him over the next couple of weeks as uh, anybody who might follow him on Instagram knows he posted a, a story of him where it looked like he was recovering from surgery that he might've had on one of his hands. Uh, I would, I would assume that maybe he returns for a potential bowl game, but I would say that's a, a best case scenario at this point in time. But like I was saying, where I think that the, just one of the biggest things that we can, we can think about with all this is that the Huskies just keep winning. And I know anybody who just sees an Oregon fan, because we get a ton of them in the comments here over on lockdown Huskies too, where every single day, no matter what we post, it's, Oh, well enjoy this while you can, because Oregon's going to stomp them again in a rematch. Uh, I get it. 
I get it. Oregon, they're playing really well and that's great. And all of that, but you can't discount this Husky coaching staff and everything it is that they've done this season so far. And they just keep finding different ways to win. And that's really at, at the end of the day, that's all that matters is getting yourself into that conversation. And if Washington is able to beat the Cougars this weekend and then beat whoever they play in the Pac-12 championship game, let's be real here. There's a huge chance that they end up in the Rose Bowl. That's probably going to be what, what, what goes on. So that's just, and that's all that matters is just getting to that point because then it's just, Hey, just keep winning. It's the same thing that it's always been it's that us versus us, that just one and know mentality, which I, I laugh at as much as anybody else because they are cliches. But in this case, that really is all that you can take for granted each week is just keep taking care of business and everything else will work itself out. Steven, welcome to the party. Says awesome to catch this live. Excited for the Pac-12 championship. Hey man, that makes two of us. Really appreciate it. Jackson says, wait till Lennon gets his guys. Ah, yeah, no, that's true. Got a great question here from Damian who says, let's say it ends up one Georgia, two Ohio State, Michigan, three, four Washington, Florida State. Would you rather play Georgia or Ohio State, Michigan first? That is a great question. And I will get to that on the other side of the break, though, because uh, shout out to Jackson and everybody else who, who loves the transitions and the ad reads. Don't have one for you here, but we're going to shoot a message to our good friends over at LinkedIn because these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn jobs. LinkedIn jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Super easy to use. All you have to do is add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown college. That's linkedin.com slash lockdown college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Ooh, taking a big breath here because there's there's a lot of talking that I got to do when I when I do this by myself. Appreciate all of you just just sticking with me through this. Um, so getting back to Damien's question, where one Georgia, two Ohio State, Michigan, three four Washington, Florida State. Who would Washington rather play first? Personally, I think that uh, Ohio State or Michigan would be the best option because their offense has been. All right, this year, I mean, it's it's been fine, especially you know when you think about Ohio State, uh, Marvin Harrison, and everything, everything that goes on with that 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 dude can play. I, I love watching that dude play. Uh, I think that that would be a better first round matchup for Washington, where it's a little bit a lower stress on the defense. I would say I haven't been super impressed with Kyle McCord this season, uh, and I think that if the Huskies are able to get a little bit of pressure, which is definitely possible with the defensive line that we've seen, especially over the last couple of weeks that that would be a, a much more winnable game overall where Georgia, they're the two time defending national champs. I think that also would be a little bit more fun in, in this hypothetical scenario to see them in the championship game, because Hey, what, what would be cooler than that? In my opinion. Also, if we think about it this way, what better, what, what, what would be better than in the final year of the PAC 12 to get a big 10 PAC 12 championship or big, big 12, uh, Big 10 Pac-12 game in the Rose Bowl, just to kind of top it all off. I think that would be absolutely fantastic. Steven says that the hot take would be, I'd prefer to play Michigan. I think we can handle their offense. I would agree with that. I think that that would be a little bit of an easier matchup compared to Ohio State. Um, but I mean, hey, it's it's almost splitting hairs at that point because I think that Ohio State's offense has better receivers, certainly. But Michigan's run game is is no joke. They can, they can really play up, up front there. But... I um, I mean, I, I want to go through some of those one here because Jackson said, I didn't get to see the Grub interview. What did he say about the second half? Uh, he actually said that uh, or the Oregon State game was the worst half of football that the offense has played this season. I, I mean, hey, I've got no disagreements there. They got shut out. They really didn't get anything going. They went three and out twice. And it was just, it was really frustrating to watch. Uh, I also want to get to this one here from Damien says, I saw someone say Roman talk super fast, which is true. Yeah, I know. I got it. <laughs> And that said, at least he can read the ads super fast too. Hey, I try my best for you guys here. This is this is what it's all about, right? It's the, we got it. Got to make sure we get those plugs in. But it's all about making sure we have as much time for content as possible. Also, if anybody out there listens on like 
one and a quarter speed, one and a half speed, anything like that. I I truly do apologize. And I'm, I'm doing my best there. Uh, and I kind of want to close on this note because Daniel here has a great comment. The offense will be trouble for any team Washington has to face. That is absolutely true. hundred percent true. And I think that is, is something that I've seen a lot in the comments here as I go through the YouTube comments whenever I possibly can that some people say, oh, well, you know, this SEC defense or this Big Ten defense is going to be enough to stop Washington's offense. But the point that I made a little bit earlier on in the show and kind of throughout the week with some of the episodes we've already recorded for this week is none of these, no, Washington's offense, first of all, it hasn't been at full strength all year with the injuries to guard mental arm, Mateo Mele, Cam Davis. We've seen those. But even with the offense that we saw through the first month of the season, we haven't seen that offense in a long time either because of the injury to Jalen McMillan. So I think that that's one thing that I think other teams need to be a little bit more aware of going forward because it's like, that Jalen McMillan just really does open up this offense. Jalen Polk and Roma Dunes, they are fantastic. They do so many great things for this team and for this offense. And Dylan Johnson opens up a lot in the run game too. But having Jalen McMillan in there, it just makes everything a matchup nightmare because you don't know where you're going because everybody can line up in so many different ways and do so many different things out of basically any formation. Ryan Grubb can call whatever, whatever just concept that he wants off of that. And as good as Jeremy Bernard is, Giles Jackson is, Denzel Boston is, whoever else is on the field in that scenario, you just can't replace what Jalen McMillan brings to this offense. And I think that just the, the matchups that, that he brings to the table are just are irreplaceable. So seeing him get back to full strength, I had a couple of bold predictions. Lars and I wanted to make sure we had some some extra time for, for the holidays this week. So we actually have everything recorded for this week. Just a, a bit of a, 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 of a look behind the curtain for us here. But we had some fun, bold predictions involving Jalen McMillan. So make sure you stay tuned to the Friday episode for that. And with that, I know I'm, I'm running a little bit short on time here. I'm going to be getting out of here. I, I might stick around in the comments for a minute or two to help everybody out. But thank you for listening to this bonus episode of Lockdown Huskies. I really appreciate it. And if you're new to the channel, hey. Welcome. Really great to have you here. Uh, please, if you like the content, please make sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcast, whether that's YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music. We are there. We are everywhere. We really, truly appreciate your support. So drop us a comment. Leave us a five-star review if you're audio only. Hit like on this video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. It really does help out our channel a whole ton. Hitting a thousand the other day was truly awesome. And I can't thank everybody enough for that. Like Sincerely, I want to make sure that everybody gets thanked for that. Thank you so much for tuning into this live broadcast and I will talk to you tomorrow.